Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Metzler, one of the programmers here at SF Doxus. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, we try to bring some of the more uh, interesting, provocative, important, and kind of eclectic documentaries from around the world for you in the Bay Area to get a chance to see. Um, you've just had a chance to see the really wonderful film Locked Out, and we have some of the filmmaking team here. Welcome, everybody. Can you introduce yourselves? Hi. Hi. I'm Lucina Fisher with the co-directors of Locked Out. And I'm Kate Davis, co-director. Cool, thank you for joining us. Um, these are kind of like, uh, in this virtual world, we kind of do these like punk rock Q and A's. Can you um, tell us a little bit about like, what, um, can, how did you decide that there was kind of this larger story that you wanted to capture as a documentary? Well, I think um, through COVID, we've seen just how housing and the unhoused have become such a huge issue, evictions, um, inequality in our country. And, um, and so I think that's brought to the fore that these forces in housing that have existed really um, since the founding of our country um, are still at work today. Um, that redlining is not something that is just thought of in the past. It's it's happening in cities like Detroit, um, San Francisco, the Bay Area, I'm sure, um, all over the country. And so I just think the contrast in Detroit is so stark that it really helped us to be able to tell this story and kind of bring it to the public. Um, in a way that hopefully they understand where a lot of the inequality we see in our country stems from. It's because, you know, yeah, a lot of the attention in the news um, is placed understandably on law enforcement issues and other areas of, of, sort of um, systemic, where systemic racism raises its head. And um, we felt that the, you know, deep inequity, the difficulty of passing down um, generational wealth in the Black community is something that can be overlooked, um, is less understood. And then we started finding that predatory lenders were out there and scammers and the, the, and the you know, story grew. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Like, as you went about, you know, kind of working to tell the story, I mean, were, you know, folks wanting to kind of, not excited, but, you know, interested in sharing it? Or was there any kind of tentativeness of like, you know, I can imagine when folks are kind of dealing with difficult times, it's not always easy to have a camera around. But how did you kind of build that trust in, you know, these kind of relationships to tell the bigger story? Well, I think any documentary filmmaking process is about um, creating trust. and. Um, we were fortunate that um, we had uh, a relationship that we developed over time with Summer Crawford, who's one of the activists uh, you saw in the film. Um, and she's very plugged in to the community, um, into the activist community there. And, um, and I think, you know, when you're working on such a, a subject, you really do need um, that partnership. It's a collaboration. Um, and so having, you know, Summer um, help guide us on this journey um, to take us into this world that they've been looking for attention, uh, you know, for, um, you know, they want this story to be told as much as anybody. Um, certainly it wasn't easy um, coming into someone's home uh, where they are at risk of eviction. And um, Kate, do you wanna say more about like just what unfolded with Nija? Yeah, it was really stunning, shocking, emotionally very upsetting to, to have in front of us to witness firsthand this um, 
you know, young mother, 26, age 26, single mother with a five-year-old little girl, um, sort of overnight become um, ousted from her home by the city. And, you know, I think she trusted us to go back to your question because, you know, she felt very overlooked by the, by the system and really the world, you know, and, and, you know, she's a kind of a pawn in a game where there's complicated contracts with uh, fine print that are really, that's really hard to understand. Um, and she didn't necessarily have the means to find a lawyer to comb through the contract that she signed. Um, and this happens across the country. And so when we came along as a film team and said we cared, I think she's was it wasn't a, a second thought for her to really try to work with us to say, yeah, tell my story because people have to know this is going on every day. Mm. Well, I'm so glad that you guys decided to tell. I think it's such an important story to, um, you know, amplify in the documentary form and just kind of show, you know, the the real people that, um, you know, are heard in situations like this. Were there any specific kind of <clears throat> challenges in kind of crafting a story for, you know, um, kind of for those that weren't kind of familiar with the issues that you can permit, but also be substantive enough, I guess, to kind of... Um, be used for uh, advocacy? Well, I think when you're telling a story that is this complex, you know, it involves mortgages, contracts, mm -hmm. math, <laughs> um, all the things that many of us filmmakers don't like. Um, but, you know, you need to really bring it to life in a way that people can understand and connect to. Um, and so that's about really telling the story in, in a more emotional, um, uh, you know, personal lens um, of the people who are impacted. And, and so, you know, Kate and I had, you know, conversations before we got on the ground about, you know, how do we bring this story to life in a way that, you um, that really reaches viewers um, and helps them understand um, how these how these scenarios play out um, without having their eyes gloss over when you know we're talking about contracts and the statistics and the facts um, that are also a part of the story. Yeah, and so what we tried to do, you know, we tried to interweave the those personal stories um, with some information with, you know, people who are really on the ground, who know what they're talking about. One is that um, a banker who at one point was, you know, helping uh, approve mortgages that did not serve uh, you know, people without a lot of money. Well, and she realized that and now is flipped and is educating these women in particular. And, and so, you're, you're kind of, and there's history in the film too. I mean, that was important as well. So I think there's a, there was kind of a braid um, approach, but it's very much anchored in, you know, the, the, the emotional, you know, vulnerability of our five or six main characters. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know our time here is short, but, you know, the thing I always try to remind our audience is that we're lucky enough that filmmakers like you all um, share their, your films early in the process uh, with us and it's a great to kind of fall in love with um, films and kind of help spread the word so what is it as we in the audience that can kind of help kind of spread the word about this really wonderful film and then also about uh, the efforts thank you for that question um, I think there's a lot that communities can be doing I think this is a great film to bring to communities to have these conversations around housing um, and housing inequality and um, evictions um, and ways that um, you know we as individuals and communities can fight back um, so you know I, I we're on the circuit right now we're um, heading next to the American Black Film Festival um, in Miami. 
Um, we'll also be at the Newark uh, Black Film Festival, um, you know, and we're looking to bring the film to wider distribution. But I, I think also really important, and Kate, you, you can say more about this, the, the sort of educational um, community level um, of screenings that we hope to see um, to really help activate and start conversations. Right. And, and also, you know, get people in the active, you know, in becoming more active to, to spread an education, education about the really pernicious, deceptive, sort of under the surface um, players who are really preying on um, people who, who want to break the, the legacy of not being able to own their own home and really want to pass on something to their children um, and can't, yeah. they're shut out. So if they don't, you know, if it isn't a broad conversation, then everybody kind of, you know, unwittingly, like we don't intend to, but we're part of a system that just perpetuates you know, this kind of um, behavior. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, really appreciate it. And thanks again for, um, you know, making Locked Out and everybody, uh, you know, please share on social media and let people know that uh, this film might be coming to a town near them. Have a great uh, week, guys. Oh, can I get, can, is, it, is it okay to add one thing? You can yep. look up the film, right, Lucina? So that might be good because we can also cr create community screenings and help help people. Um, with this film. And I think that the Facebook page, there's a good one. Oh, and and, and the uh, website, which is lockedoutfilm.com. There you go. Everybody, so yeah, if um, if you're moved by the film and would like to kind of figure out a way to kind of share it within your own community, uh, please reach out to Locked Out Film and we can kind of help spread the word about the um, this important issue, but also just a really well story well told. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. Uh, have a great week, guys. Thanks, Chris. Okay, are we off now? Thank you.